Hello everybody, my name is Walter and this is episode 53 of my Rest and Command series. In this episode I want to cover two of the most important commands when you're working with data packs, which are the scoreboard command and the trigger command. Now, those two commands are somewhat related, but have different use cases. The scoreboard command is used to, in general, handle and set objectives and scores. On the other hand, the trigger command allows players, even if commands or cheats are deactivated, to directly manipulate their own scores under the right and somewhat limited circumstances. I will show you an example a bit later. But what are objectives and players when I'm talking about scoreboards? To make it simple, objectives define what is being measured, and players define for whom or who is being measured. Objectives track basically just simple numbers for specific entities, and those numbers are 32-bit integer numbers, so between plus and minus roughly 2 billion. Players, on the other hand, are usually tracked entities that have a score for an objective, but interesting enough, you can also use player names that don't exist, so you can essentially use your own variables which means that scoreboards or scoreboard objectives and scores are very commonly used in data packs to do simple math. And with that, let's get to the syntax for those two commands. Now, as you can already see here, the scoreboard command is very versatile, so I had to split this onto multiple pages. The first deals with objectives in general. The second deals with modifying existing objectives. Then we have dealing with players in general and in more specific cases. And then finally, format for display of players. And then, at the very end, you would have the trio command. So let's start at the beginning. Dealing with objectives in general. For that, you need scoreboard and then as main mode objectives. If you just want a list of the objectives that are currently available, you continue with list. Let's quickly do that. And you can see there are currently two brush click and brush menu. Both are used in a data pack I have running in the background. Now, if you want to add a new one, you continue with add. And then you need to give in that objective a name. This is the internal name that is used in all of the other command options when you are referring to an objective. After that, you use, or you have to define what type of objective you're talking about. Is it a dummy? So just a number that is not automatically changed by the game for mathematical purposes? Is it a trigger that can be used in combination with the trigger command? Or is it a death count, a player kill count, or a total kill count, which are automatically tracked by the game? Or is it just the plain number for health, XP, level, food, air, or armor of a given player, which can't be changed with the command? If you stop there, then the internal name of the objective is also the display name. If you want the display name to be something else, you just continue after the criteria. And here you can actually use JSON text. So you can define, I want this in bold, I want this in a specific color, I want a specific text that may deviate from the internal name of the objective. This is the name that appears when you have that objective referred to within text. If you want to remove an existing objective, then you just write remove objective after the scope of objectives, of course. And if you want to display or deal with the display of objectives, you write set display, then define which slot you're talking about, which can be just list, sidebar or sidebar for a team, or below the name of a player that is hovering above the head of a player. If you stop there, you reset that display. If you continue with the objective ID or internal name of an objective, uh, you set it to that objective. So let's show a few examples. List I already showed you. So let's add another objective. In this case, it's called power level. It's a dummy objective and it is in bold, dark red, italic, and power level before the underscore. And you can see down here, it has been created. And if I now get my list, you can see even within the list, we get the display name, not the internal name. At least for this one here, since for brush clicked and brush menu, I didn't define a display name. So those are the actual internal names. I could also remove it, pretty simple. And if I now go back to the list, it's no longer there. Let's reactivate it since I'm going to use this in the future. Now, next up, let's set the display sidebar to the power level. And now you can see also over there, we see the display name on the right side of the screen. If I just write set display sidebar, now you can see it has been reset. But let's keep it activated. I'm going to use this in the future. Next up, let's talk about 
modifying existing objectives. For that, you use scoreboard objective modify, and then you define which objective you're talking about. You can do this only one objective at a time. And then you can modify the display auto update, which can be either true or false. And this defines whether the display is automatically updated when a score changes. If you're using the objective just for simple math and you don't want to display this anywhere, then you could set this to false and maybe reduce the lag a tiny bit. You can also use this to change the display name after the fact. So if you're not happy with how the display name looks, you can change it using this command with display name and then again as JSON text, the new display name. You can also define a number format, which can be either blank, then the numbers are not written down. You still have the players listed, but there are no numbers for those players. You can use fixed and then basically again a JSON text. This means that instead of a number, this text is displayed. You can also use styled, following that a JSON text, you could say, or format, which defines after the fact how the numbers themselves will look. Do you want them in bold? Do you want them in a specific color? And similar. That is uh, basically what you can do with that. You can also define whether you want to have it rendered as hearts or simple integer numbers with the render type and then hearts or integer. So let's just give myself a little point in power level. And now, before I use this command, you can see the number is in red. My name is in white and nothing really surprising, but let's set the power level number format to styled and then color gold. And you can see now instead of red, this is now in gold. And if I get another player, this will automatically also be in red, uh, sorry, in gold, because this is a general attribute of the objective itself. You can modify it for just single players Oh, but I will come to that in a few moments. So next up, let's start in dealing with players. So scoreboard players. And now you can just get a list of all the players that are currently tracked. So all the players that have currently a uh, objective, unless you specify a entity, a player. And in that case, you would get all the objectives with the scores of that player. So let's get a plain list and you can see down here my name three times and it uh, does not exist. So here are just a few examples of players that may exist or may not exist, what I mentioned in the beginning. One thing you can do obviously is get the current score, which can then be used in combination with ex execute store command, for example, to write it into uh, MBT data, a storage or whatever. For that, score.players, get, and then you specify the target entity or non-entity if you want to call a non-existing player that, and then you specify the objective again. So in this case, I'm looking at a chicken called Cluck Norris, and I'm looking at the power level of that chicken. And you can see currently Cluck Norris doesn't have a power level, so I'm not getting anything out of this. Now, if you want to change the actual score for a scoreboard objective, what I already did back here in the background, you can do three things. You can set it to a specific number, you can add a specific positive number, or you can remove a specific positive number, which is basically minus function. After that, you specify the target or targets. And this time you can actually do this at the same time for multiple entities. Then you specify the internal name, and then finally, you give it a plain number. This must be an integer number, so a whole number. So in this example here, I am setting for Clock Norris the power level to 9001. And if I do this, you can see it automatically appeared in the power level sidebar. Now Clock Norris has a custom name, but what you can see here is the actual identifier of Clock Norris. And then finally you can reset the value by using reset, then the target or targets, and then optionally the objective. If you don't define the objective, the target gets reset completely. So all objectives for that target are 
reset it. If you specify, then only that specified objective is deleted. So let's reset for clock Norris and you can see it disappeared from the sidebar. So let's reactivate this again because we are once more using this in a bit. Now let's get to the more interesting functionalities. The first is uh, if you have a scoreboard objective that was defined as a trigger type, then you can use the scoreboard players enable for targets and then for the objective to enable the command and once it's enabled, you can use the trigger command on that objective. Example will follow a bit later, but after you have used the trigger command, it is automatically disabled again. So you can only use this once per enable command. The second is maybe a bit more interesting, and that is where you can actually do math. Scoreboard players operation followed by the target or targets then the target objective, which is once more just the internal name of the objective. And then you define an operation, which can be the equal sign, which means that you just copy. You can add to your current value or subtract, multiply, divide, or modulo. You can swap using the greater and smaller than in sequence, or you can set it to the menu or the maximum of the two scores. That are your current options. And then you define your second operand, which is again first an entity, a player name, or unique identifier, target selector, and then again the internal name of the objective you want to work with. So you can even combine different objectives of different entities with each other. So in this example, I'm taking my own power level and I'm swapping it with the power level of Clark Norris. And as you can see, now I have the 9001 and Clark Norris has the one. Of course, we're going to switch this back because we don't want to get any trouble. Anyway, let's continue on. Last, we can change the display again. And here we can change two things. We can change how the name of the player is displayed and we can change again the number format, but just for that player. So we can overwrite for that player the number format that was defined with the objective. For that, we use scoreboard players display. If we continue with name, then we are changing the name. If we continue with number format, we're changing the format of the numbers. After that, we need to specify which targets or target we are addressing. And then again, the objective. And then again, the text. If you don't define the text, then it's reset to the default of that objective. If we give it a text, this can be again JSON text, we can do interesting stuff. So let's start with that example here. Scoreboard player's display name. And here we are addressing the display name for Clark Norris for the power level. And we're setting this to text Clark Norris in bold and in gold. And now you can see instead of the actual ID number for Clark Norris, we are getting Clark Norris. The second thing you can change is how the numbers are displayed. This is analog to what we did in the objectives, but this time it only addresses a single player, a single target, or you can actually address multiple targets at the same time, obviously. Again, you have blanked, fixed with a JSON component, styled with its style. And in this example here, I'm going for display number format for Clark Norris, the power level, and we're saying fixed over 9,000. And if we do this, you can see we don't have a number anymore, we just have the text we gave it. And that was the scoreboard command, so let's get to the trigger command. So the first thing you can do is just use trigger and then the internal name of an objective. If you use this, you will increment that objective for yourself by one, but only if it's been enabled beforehand. If you instead continue after the objective with add or set and then a value, which is just a whole number, then you will either add or increment by that value, or you will set the objective to that new value. This can be quite useful if you want to give the player the ability to select a certain menu point. So let's show you an example. First of all, I am going to need an objective of the trigger type. So this is called trick this, and it's the trigger type. Then I'm going to set this to the 
sideboard so we can actually see what's going on. Finally, I'm first going to just trigger this. And you can see I cannot trigger this objective yet because it hasn't been enabled for me. So let's do that. Score with players enable for myself and then trick this. And now it has been enabled and you can see I already appear in the sidebar because it has automatically been set to zero for myself. Now I can trigger it and you can see it has been incremented by one. Now it's one. If I try to trigger this a second time, I can't trigger it because it was automatically disabled again once I triggered it. So I need to re-enable it and then I can trigger it a second time. Now, what I can still do is use the scoreboard command on that uh, well, objective. So let's say for myself, then trick this and I want to set this to 10. You can see I can still do this. So the trigger objectives are still available via the scoreboard command. But as I said, if the commands are disabled, you can still use the trigger command for interactions with data packs. This is the main reason for the trigger command. And with that, we've reached the end of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I wish you a nice day and well, see you.